Keeping an eye out. I used to have this big hound, like to dig for bones. Well, he'd be real excited right about now. Deceitful wretch! Grave robber! You who dig for that which you did not bury, speak! Explain yourself and be judged!
You seek what is mine, what was rightfully lost. Your actions speak for themselves. The battery opened, the forge ignited. You showed mercy to souls that evaded my judgment, secured them to the battery's defenses. Mercy was not yours to give. The dwarves sealed their own fate. The forge was meant to be forgotten. And now, here you are again, denying peace to the buried. It was never meant for mortal use. Such power, such truths lie within it. It can bring only ruin. When the Pargrunin came to the White March, they were peaceful. They shared common beliefs and purpose. Their visions for the Forge tore them apart. You have seen this for yourself. They would have destroyed themselves in the end. You need only look to the history of your own civilization for assurance. How many wars, how many fallen empires might have been averted if only their leaders could forget the objects of their ambition. I mourned the loss of the Pargrunin. Misfortune brought them here. They did not deserve to end so soon. Do not play coy with a god, Watcher. I know you have seen his death. I feel it whenever a forgotten thing is taken from me. Abidin did not deserve to die here. This place, it was the least I could do to give his remains some privacy. I call the moon down to me, Ioni brother. It was against his wishes. He would not listen to reason. Would not listen to me. In his madness, he splintered the moon. But it was not enough. The greatest of the fragments still fell toward that which he would protect. In the end, he took position where it would fall. And absorbed the impact himself. That time has been forgotten now, and so his death belongs to me. Everything he was before the impact. Understand he was not always as he is now. His body was not all he left behind. He was devoted to progress and industry from the beginning. But so too was he devoted to preservation. In those times he would let nothing go. Nothing could be forgotten. His will was iron long before his body. We agreed long ago, all of us, not to alter the course of Kith's civilization. Not directly. Not unless there were no other choice. But in this matter, there was no other choice. He understood that as well as anyone. It was for duty that he opposed it. I would have stopped it if I could, but by then it was too late. Time has finished much of what I started. I cannot tell you that, mortal, for fear of undoing all its costly work. You may ask. The great conundrum of a god is how close to become with your subjects. 
Too far and they lose hope. Too close and your own judgment fails. Civilizations are meant to ebb and flow. Allow them to persist for too long in power or knowledge, and you invite catastrophe. There was a time when we let our sympathies get the better of us. When memories were allowed to persist that should have been washed away. The other gods could not be moved to act. I did what had to be done without them. I speak of what is forgotten. I failed that day, but my purpose was achieved in the end. I will not dredge up the memory to satisfy idle curiosity. Memories are the spirits of the past. You of all people should know their sway on the present, Watcher. Mortals measure the worth of their lives in memory. Who will remember me? How long until I am forgotten? Memory governs every thought, informs every choice. It can fuel passion, understanding, love. Or it can create obsession, madness. You have seen it plague many souls in your travels. Consider the old Watcher who inherited unspeakable crimes from birth. Or the young woman who committed herself to Brackenbury for love of things she remembered she had. Or the fisherman whose life became a sentence the day he killed his sister. Or the Glonfathen boy for whom an old medallion was worth more than all the fruits of his labors. They could be free from their burdens, if only they could forget. For some, perhaps. But for many, the memory is all that remains of it. Would your life not have a better course, Amawa, if the faults of another lifetime were not dragging you down? Thing doesn't make it go away. The source of those wounds is long gone. The memory was all that could do you harm. Even when problems have run their course, memory can be the stone that sinks you into the abyss. Indeed? And what has led you to conclude you know better than a god, mortal? That hardly sounds like an improvement on inner peace. Is that the extent of your argument? There may be hope for you yet, Watcher. Your reasoning is interesting, mortal. Perhaps there is something to it. But it is not my will to simply do good. Those broken souls that fail your test, those are the ones I love most. For no other god will have them. What small mercies they ask of me, I will always grant. Was there something else, mortal? What the world casts aside, I take into my care. A thing may be forgotten, but it is never alone as long as I am here. They were lost children, abandoned, fixed on a purpose that no longer had meaning. I took them in, gave them new purpose. I did not create them, but yes, they are mine. They were his once, I won't deny it. He created them as assistants to carry out his work on Aora. 
but he has long been the overseer of progress in the world. Leaving things behind has always been his way. I allow him to leave his past in my care, so that it does not hold him back. I... I suppose we do. But then, the gods have always been able to accomplish far greater things when working together. Speak your mind. Careful what you accuse a god of, mortal. And what if I did, mortal? It does him no harm to forget. On the contrary, it lifts a burden. If Abaddon remembered, it would threaten the harmony between the gods. It was not so long ago that conflict between us led to disaster in your world and the death of one of our number. Memory is but an image we create to make sense of the present. It carries no truth or meaning but what we ascribe. A slight alteration to it is a small price to pay for peace. Memory deceives. It distorts. It reimagines. This is no different. The peace between the gods is already fragile. It will not withstand another shock. Speak your mind. Some things that are forgotten must never be remembered. Not merely for the benefit of those who forgot, but for the entire world. There can be no second thoughts, no sympathy or stays of execution. The Eyeless were born to fulfill this task, though even their creator did not know it. They are single-minded and relentless. They do not flinch when called upon to do what is necessary. Kith owe them a great debt for the troubles they have hidden away. You may ask. On the contrary, mortal, their work must continue. Far too much was uncovered while they lay dormant. Those who know too much of the White Forge will be washed clean from Aeora, and then the Eyeless shall rest once more. Even if it is as you say, there is nothing that can be done. The Eyeless do not think for themselves. They have only the purpose that is given to them. They do not stop until the purpose is fulfilled. They will not change course now for me or anyone. I am sorry. Only if those they pursue are no longer a threat. The Raid Sarens were stopped before they could take the White Forge. In your case, Watcher, you are well beyond that now. And if what you say is true, then the Deerwood is as well. The interventions of gods seldom work out in anyone's favor. Our touch is too heavy. The world crumbles beneath it. It is why we so often enlist the help of mortals. They execute our wishes with greater care. I have done far too much already. Your determination is commendable. But the eyeless number in the thousands. You will need more than strength or luck. I will give you what aid I can. I bade the Eyeless to remain hidden when at rest. They are gathered in the hollow of a great rock, splintered from Aeoni Brother. It lies in a flooded crater known as Karen Scar. Know, too, that they were built to answer the call of their master's hammer. When they hear it strike, they come to its aid. If you were to take that piece of his hammer from here and reshape it in Abaddon's forge into a likeness of the original, you might be able to call them to you. But destroying them would be another matter. I know of one way, but only from the center of the lion's den. Only with their master's hammer in your service. If you can do all this, 
If you can reshape what remains of Abaddon's hammer and bring it inside their lair, I can instruct you there on what you would need to do. And I will see you through when the time comes. You may ask. If you do not be assured, they will come for you as they did for the Pargrunen. Careful as you approach the lake. When I claimed the Eyeless, I made sure they would not be discovered while they slept. Many of my most devoted followers stand watch there. They will not allow you near. And there is something far worse. Something more fearsome and dangerous than any Eyeless. Let us hope you do not attract its attention.